Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday to all. Lonnie, Isabel, how are you today? Good. Doing great. Really Good. excited. Uh, I'm excited for what it is that you ladies have to share with us today. Um, so we're going to be talking about some DIY critter crafts for everybody that is joining us. You were emailed um, the templates, but this webinar is completely informative. So you're going to learn some stuff that you can take back and, you know, on when you've got some time, you can go ahead and complete these projects yourself on, you know, weekend, make it a family thing. So you will get a recording of this webinar as well as the um, templates. Is there anything else you ladies want to add to that? No, we're just excited to see you guys and let's get started. All right. Maybe so for those of you that uh, are with us for the first time, we're going to go over some general housekeeping tips. So I want to remind everyone that this is an audio visual webinar so you will be able to see and hear us but we will not be able to see and hear you um, if you've got any questions please use the chat box on the right hand side of your screen and go ahead and ask any questions and i will be able to see them and answer them um, the best as i can okay um, if you can try and save your questions to the end we may answer it in the uh during the webinar and i would invite you to join us for some upcoming holiday webinars in a couple of weeks we do have uh we're going to be talking about pet er with uh, our own dr tam and you know since the holidays are coming we're going to be talking about chocolate and tinsel and flowers and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and after that, we're going to answer the age old questions. Do puppies make good gifts? So we're going to talk with Fernando Diaz and he's going to tell us everything we need to know about bringing home a new dog for the holidays. Um, like I mentioned before, this webinar is being recorded. So if at any time you do need to um, exit the room or you've missed any portion of this you want to go back watch it in slow-mo be able to pause you're going to be sent a copy of this tomorrow so without further ado we're going to send it over to Lonnie and Isabel all righty guys so we're going to start off with a fairly easy project where's my camera there it is First things first is you do wanna, we're gonna be making a veggie roller. This is gonna be a really awesome project to do with either a rabbit, it could be used for any kinds of critters. If you wanna downsize it, you can even use it for hamsters and rodents. Essentially, this is gonna be food enrichment. So a way for them to be able to not only get, only get the nutrients they need, but it's also gonna give them something different to do. So you should have a template in your template PDF, but depending what size of an animal you're working with, it's gonna be the size of your roller. So something roughly that size would be great for a guinea pig or a small rabbit. Bigger size is going to be for a standard larger rabbit, um, even a Flemish giant, this could apply to. So whatever size could work just fine. You could do um, even like a skewer in the kitchen. So anything that's pokey on one end, and you're actually gonna cut this end out. So you could go ahead and use a pair of scissors if that's handy, just make sure they're really sharp, or you can use an X-Acto blade. So whatever works for you, and you're gonna go ahead and cut those ends off. So just like so, if you have youngers helping you out, do make sure you supervise, because anything pointy can potentially be dangerous and that's how you're going to go ahead and get your point 
just nice and pointy. One end is going to go into your roller as such, and the other end caps off the pointy. You only need one pointy end because that's the part that's going to have the fruit, vegetables, anything seasonal that your animal likes connected to it. When you're done, you should end up with a product that looks similar to this. And that's really easy peasy because that's um, a really nice nutritious fruit. However, this would be something that's more of a treat. So you want to make sure that your animal isn't eating too much of this because it is very high in sugar. So this is an occasional thing, maybe a Christmas day delight. And what's really nice is as they eat, it rolls. I lost the tire, ignore that. So it seems like Isabel has frozen. Um, we're gonna. All we needed was a yard to be able to cover all of our projects. Mm -hmm. So um, the yard ran about $3.99 the yard. So we're gonna cut out the shape of our template. When you cut that out, you should end up with a shape that's roughly eight and a half by eight and a half. And we're going to go ahead and that. So it seems that Isabel is having some technical difficulties. We are going to see what Lonnie has for us to share right now. Hey, Lonnie. Hey, Michelle. Welcome back. So I, think, I think you guys, we have a little bit of an emergency. We want to make sure that she's able to come back to us and show us these projects properly. But before we get started, um, we're actually going to go into my PowerPoint. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on our bridge project that we worked on. I believe that's the one that we have queued up first, right, Michelle? Yes, we're going to talk about the bridge. Awesome. Let's do the bridge then. Let's see. So before we get started, you guys, I'm going to show you the, supp the supplies that you guys need. You need cardboard, popsicle sticks, eco-friendly glue. So this means non-toxic glue. You can actually use there's, a, there's various options for this, and we used all non-toxic glue. There's actually an eco-friendly glue stick that's available online as well, but you can also use eco-friendly non-toxic, like um, it's kind of like an Elmer's glue that's available as well, or scissor and scissors or an X-Acto knife. I ended up using scissors. It was actually pretty simple. So let's get on to the next part of the bridge. You good, Michelle? Yep. There okay. we go. So before I got started, you guys, I did it really simple. Um, you actually, I just used cardboard, Amazon boxes, whatever you guys have that's easy to cut. And I cut basically two similar rainbows. Um, that's kind of what I'm calling them. You can use a, what is it called? A protract, is it a protractor to create the circles? A yes, circle, a right? you could get very serious and cut perfect circles and then just basically cut them down the middle and you'll create the same kind of uh, perfect circle idea that I have here. As you can see, I kind of freehanded it. And the reason that I freehanded it was because your animals are going to be different sizes, like Miss Izzy had mentioned. So hamsters are typically a lot smaller than guinea pigs. And if you want to make a real, a, a, a heavier one, you're definitely going to have to use a lot more glue and just make sure that it's super solid. So I made a small one that's relatively a nice size for maybe like a larger hamster or a smaller guinea pig. Then I grabbed um, 
three uh, oversized, they're like tongue depressors, they call them usually when you use them at the, um, the medical offices, um, but they're actually just regular popsicle sticks. And then I turn them around. So next, Okay. Thanks, Michelle. I turned them on, uh, over, around and I just cut them and I basically lengthened them the size, whatever your animal is. So that can be a guinea pig or like I said, a hamster. You kind of have to measure it to see kind of what would work with the animal that you have. Um, I definitely recommend putting um, two very solid sticks under and that just strengthens the base for the top of the bridge. And then I went ahead and on the right side, you can see I kind of just measured it into the center top section for your animal. And so just that kind of is going to dictate the rest of the way that you lay out your stairs. Next slide is I'm just showing you kind of how I measured it all. Once you measure your top pieces, all the other pieces are the same length. So make sure that if you're going to cut three for the top deck, I would call it. The rest of them, which as you can see, I put three on one side and then I put three on another. So given how wide and how long you make your bridge is really dependent on you, um, the amount of stairs you're actually going to provide. So that's a really easy project. <clears throat> and there you go on the right hand side. This is a really basic bridge that you can build with your friends and family. Um, and you know, the next part I will explain to when we do the demo of the paper mache is you can actually cover the whole thing in paper mache pieces and you could actually make it a really smooth bridge. So in the next, uh, in our next slide, I can kind of explain to you Jurassic Park. So we're really excited, you guys. We worked really hard on trying to figure out the proper materials. And I'm just gonna explain to you sort of the way that we all kind of work together and kind of what I went through when I was trying to build this uh, project for you guys. So I got cardboard boxes. Um, you can use salt canisters, coffee canisters. Trader Joe's has some really great coffee canisters you can use. Seas Candy has an amazing canister. There's 99 cent store salt canisters. Um, this is definitely a re-up project. So this is definitely, um, a really great project if you want to just collect boxes over time and do it. Um, paper towels I use, you can use newspaper, but for whatever reason, I felt like paper towels were just more sanitary for your animal. Um, I think newspaper has ink in it, and I don't know, I just, I, I found it a little bit grosser. I think just cleaner paper towels or toilet paper. Uh, we use toilet paper for a lot of our projects that we make. Then you need a bowl uh, to mix your, your ingredients together. Uh, you can use a paintbrush. I'm very much into getting dirty, so I just used my hands when I applied it onto the pieces. Uh, masking tape to put together all the boxes, as you can see later on in the slideshow. Any cutting tool, so I would say again, an X-Acto knife, scissors, sharp scissors, whatever is easiest for you to cut through, whatever you're deciding. I decided to use really thin cardboard, so try not to find things that are super thick and hard to maneuver with. Try to find thin boards. Um, very um just eat more malleable cardboard is very helpful um and then flower water and then i actually use beetroot powder so you guys are going to check out what we actually how it really looked and and the process so so these are all the boxes of everything i collected as you can see this is the layout. So we have a pretty big cage, guys, because of course it's Pasadena Humane. So what I would say is, first of all, is just lay everything out the way that you want it to work. Um, I would say when you lay it out, sort of map it out in your mind, how you want everything to see, to be kind of laid out and visualize how you want it to look. As you can see, I want, I want to have like a mountain sort of on the side. This is Forastic Park, so it has to look like kind of like out in the desert and have some sort of like form. On the far right hand side, I use the salt canister as sort of a cool little ramp area. And the coffee canister on the left, that's right under the tent, is actually going to be inside, halfway inside the box. So it's just laying it out and visualizing how you want your piece to look. But before I even did that, I needed to see sort of map it out. So as you can see, what I did is I grabbed a big piece of butcher paper. And because I was going to do this from home, I put the butcher paper inside of the cage and I just smashed it all the way around so that all of the, the crevices of the outside of the cage could actually be seen to me. And then I went ahead and took a Sharpie and just sort of ran the Sharpie all along the edging so I could get a very true, uh, very true measurement of 
the layout because you can you know use the measuring you measuring tape or whatever but there's nothing like laying it all out and you can actually see it for what it really is when you do the layout so then this is me at home um so basically i laid out the butcher paper on a table and then the way that i had imagined the pieces in the earlier uh picture i just laid everything out and really started to sort of uh in my mind imagine how i wanted the piece to look and so as you can see i actually found an egg carton that i was going to throw away and i thought this would be a really great piece to add to it it gives it layer and it'll give it a lot of opportunities for an animal to be able to kind of wander in and just you know just give it more jazz jazz it up um the boxes are all boxed separately so as you can see uh, michelle has kind of the arrow if you can see that kind of in the left so yeah right there the left and that whole section was boxed separately and then the if, if she goes more to the center area you can see that the four saltine boxes were actually boxed together so i boxed two together and then i boxed three together and then i well no i boxed sorry i boxed two together and then i boxed another two together and then i boxed them all together so i just used a ton of, tons of tape because it was just easier and it was quick and it just makes it easier for you when you're actually doing like the whole layout process. And then this is basically how I measured everything. I just measured everything by hand, you guys, because every piece you can try to measure perfectly, but just using, um, you know, any sort of marker and outlining everything will just give you the truest way. I just made sure to cut it slightly smaller than the actual piece so that when I, you know, put it actually in the box, it really fought its way in there. So you know that then once you add tape to it, and then once you, you actually add the uh, flour and paper and the decoupage part, it'll actually be really solid because it's, it's kind of stuck in there. And this was super simple. Um, you could use an X-Acto knife, but I just used a regular really sharp knife and it cut really well into the saltine um, little bit of cans. And what's really great about these is these are cardboard, so they're super safe for your animal. You're not gonna have to worry about them chewing into anything that's actually gonna hurt them. Um, and this was just a simple 99 cent store buy. And then as you can see, all I did with that one was I just found a really cool hole in one of those like uh, coffee, cake cup, cake, whatever. There was already a hole in it. So you can kind of take advantage of the situation and find opportunities in boxes. And so I just threw the salt canister in there and then it, it created this cool little cave. And then this is sort of a, a an, an aerial shot of how I stacked up all the boxes. And so I, I can kind of visualize what else I was gonna do next. And then the egg carton was really cool. So I took the egg carton and I took the top off and I actually just ended up using the bottom for this piece. And then I just taped it directly on the back end of the, the model. So this is really simple. I just went to the 99 cent store and got all purpose flour and it, I just used a cup. So it's one part, it's one part water to one part of the flour. So everything I used was one cup of water to one, one part flour. And I'm gonna do a demo of that so you guys can kind of see what that looks like. Every time I created a batch of this, I did about three cups water to two, almost to, to two cups, I'm sorry three cups flour to three cups uh, water. But I, I did eventually have to add a little more water as it can, it gets kind of difficult to maneuver with. So just know that you might have to add a little water. So have a little water handy on the side if needed be. And I just used paper towels. Um, these were actually, I just had a roll of, of paper towels that had fallen onto the floor originally. So I didn't really want to use them for uh, like, you know, for washing hands or cleaning, um, but they weren't really dirty or anything. Um, but I just thought this would be a better alternative than to like newspaper. So this is me outside because this is a really messy project, you guys. So please don't do it anywhere where you love it or you're okay with it getting dirty. Um, please do it in a well ventilated area. And I actually like doing it outside because I, I actually put the piece outside to dry in the sun. Um, but this was actually on that rainy weekend about two weeks ago so it was kind of tricky to do that um so i do recommend also please wear clothes that you don't care about because it will get on there um also um, even though it's flour and water i highly recommend you wash your dishes your bowls your spoons everything you're using immediately after because it's really gunky and it's hard to get off and i'm also going to recommend that if anything falls on the floor wipe it up as soon as possible because it'll end up just sticking really hard i mean this stuff it really does uh get a grip on everything it touches 
so this is it. So this is the piece. This is after, uh, I would say, two and a half layers of going over it over and over again. So I did two really good layers the first time, and then I let it dry, and then I went back and I did another two layers. And as you can see, it looks really cool. It looks nothing like the other piece. And I was I was remarking to Michelle and Izzy is that this could have been like a cool Star Wars scene, especially with the Mandalorian kind of back. Um, it definitely felt very cool. Like I almost debated not coloring it, but we were trying to go for kind of a, a volcanic, sort of cool vibe like Frassic Park. So uh, the next one is where I started questioning what we were doing with it. <laughs> so I ended up using organic uh, bee powder and I got that from Sprouts. Uh, I believe you can get on Amazon. You can get it at all kinds of places. And I know that uh, Michelle has some really awesome information for us later about dyeing awesome cool models and, and dioramas and stuff like that. Um, with this one, I thought it was going to give it more of a desert vibe. Um, and it did, but I definitely see in the next slide what I'm talking about. It kind of changed. Oh, yeah. And then also, you guys, I added, all I did was add water. So the one in the front is the powder. And I just added as much water as I want. As you can see, it's super duper thick. You can add more water, less water. Um, I would also say that the, le the less water you add, um, the thicker it is, the more water you add, it's gonna be lighter. Um, in the back, I was messing around. I actually got some blueberries and I just uh, mashed them up and I tried to see how that would work. And that wasn't as good because it's like, the powder is just easier to work with and the um, berries just fell like they didn't they didn't take they didn't die as well as i thought that they were going to die here it is so this is sort of uh just using the full powder and i wasn't really me personally izzy actually likes it um i was really happy with the color i thought it was a little extreme um i feel like this photo actually is a lot brighter than when you see it in real life but i was trying to go for a more of like a sedona desert vibe and that was definitely not uh, the vibe that I felt, it felt a little too bright red and kind of, it was just a little weird and I wasn't expecting it. So I started double sort of questioning the look. And so I kind of went back and as when Michelle hits the next one, I decided to add brown paper. So this was all brown paper bags, um, Trader Joe's bags. And I didn't want to completely cover it because I did appreciate the different nuances in the actual diorama idea. Um, but I wanted to break it up a little bit because I just didn't like, it just felt like too much red going on. So in the next one, this is how it looks. And this is when it was super wet. So um, when you guys see it in the end, I'm actually so happy with the, the way it came out, but it definitely felt a little trickier when I was working with it. Cause sometimes you don't know what you're doing when you're doing it. This is the first time I've ever built something like this before. Um, so I would also recommend, and uh, Izzy and I will talk about that in a few minutes, is um, sort of after this, because your animals are going to be sitting on this and living in it and pooping and peeing and, you know, who knows. So what we recommend is also getting an, um, a, a non-toxic sealer for anything that you're building. Um, there are some eco paint sealers that are available that we Googled that you can definitely Google. Um, because what's going to happen is this piece is, I mean, unless this is just a show piece and you're only doing it for the fun and it's only going to be up for a few days. But if this is something that you really feel like you want to have a little more long term, we recommend you using a sealer uh, for sure and sealing the whole piece right after. Yeah. All right. So, so I think, yeah. We're actually going to go back to Isabel so she can talk about the swing awesome isabel are you with us now yes i am awesome yay sorry guys we had a little technical difficulty we're back on it's the age of technology however it's sometimes a fickle thing yes Alrighty, guys so back to the swing i know there's been a little bit of a back and forth but if you follow along we had our pre-cut piece. We were cutting strips off, kind of like what we do with our cat beds. Those of you that have made cat beds for us are more than likely familiar with this. Up on the screen is a picture of the materials that we are using. Um, I do wanna make a note that the ribbon and the rings are an optional piece. It's something that can help 
connect to the cage a little easier. However, if you just want to strip the fabric and make ends long enough for you to connect, that's also something super simple that you can do. It just completely depends on your skill level. But for those of you that may have not caught it, when we seal these ends, all it is is looping. You can double knot, you can triple knot, whatever you feel comfortable with. But you end up with a braid that looks similar to this. And it also gives you a really nice cute fringe. When you're done, you actually end up with a piece that looks like this. Now, because of the way that we tie it, you do end up with an overall hammock that's a little smaller than what you originally had. So you go from something this size, you know, and it does shrink down to this size. So that's why you do need to size accordingly, depending on the animal that you are creating this for. I went ahead and only did two sides just because I think aesthetically it's really cute, but you can do all four sides. The reason I also like the only two sides is once you have it up and hanging, this opening can also act like a little safety sack. So it just gives them another place that they can hide. We're creating these for what would be considered prey animals. So places that they can hide and they can feel safe are super important. So the more options that you have in the cage, the better. Now onto our next part of this, we do need to go ahead and create the, the actual pieces that connect to your cage. So I went ahead and stripped four pieces. These are all gonna be the same size. And the way we're gonna connect them is actually using a glue gun. Excuse me, is actually using a glue gun. However, like Lonnie said, we do have to use something that is relatively safe for them. So we went ahead and got Elmer's hot glue. And the reason that I do like this is if you go in the back and you start reading what's in it, it's non-toxic, acid-free. Like anything in life, you can't always have a 100% guarantee, but this is as close as we could get. And whenever you add anything into your creator's cage, you 100% want to supervise them to make sure they're not going to be excessively chewy. So you just want to make sure they're not going to ingest anything that's not that great for them. If you do see a lot of chewing or if you do see like, hey, maybe this is not something that um, I feel comfortable having in their cage, by all means, just create a slit in the fabric and run your fabric through. And that way there's no glue involved. But the way we're going to go ahead and connect this is we're going to flip it upside down, do a little dollop of glue. Go ahead and put that on there. Lonnie is a seasoned glue gun veteran, so she can do this pretty much barehanded. I, yes. however, am, <laughs> I, however, am still earning my calluses, so I actually use the little metal handle on the glue gun. You'll receive your stripes soon, Izzy. Thank you. I've been burned several times, so I'm <laughs> waiting for that. Like, is it a mail order thing? You'll know when you know. Ah, yeah, we're going to do all four sides. Now, friends, once that dries, there we go, you end up with a piece that can hang just like this. Pretty cute, right? But wait, there's more. Ooh. If you want, I'm all about the extra. So you can just literally tie this end to your cage and call it a day, or we have these metal rings and you can buy these off of Amazon. You get like a hundred of them for like $3. They're super affordable. They open up and they just give you a little bit more clear security. So you can um, actually attach these to the cages. For some people, these are a little bit easier because you don't really have to fumble with the, the fabric, trying to get it through and all that. It's just like a clip and you're done. So to do that, you just loop over your piece of fabric. Well, you can be open, it can be closed. It really doesn't matter. And result will be the same. Put a little dollop mm -hmm. in there, fold over your fabric. You do want to make sure you keep um, your fold all the same because you want to make sure everything's the same length. You don't want to have like a, a topsy-turvy hammock, but that's what it looks like. 
and you'll be able just to clip that on into your page. We're going to do all four sides. I need three more rings. And like I said, this is an extra step that you can take if you want. Aesthetically, I think it looks very pretty either way. So it's really on you about what you prefer. Those of you that have watched us do stuff like this before know I'm super fond of saying tap, 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 and everything in me wants to say it, but I'm trying really hard not to. <laughs> That's your thing, though. It is my thing, though. I don't know. I was actually having this conversation with a friend the other day and I was like, I don't know, I'm just really fond of like repetitive sounds. I don't know if that's a thing neurologically. I don't know, but I like it. It's called music, Izzy. Is it? Is that what it's called? Music. <laughs> I like my own music. All right, and users. So there, all four rings are attached. And that's what they look like with your hammock. And you can just slap that on the, the cage walls and you're good to go. You guys may be noticing that our pieces are on the larger side and that's also having to do with cage size. But the other thing is also, you do need bigger cages when you're dealing with prey. Um, and the main reason being what they normally sell you in a uh, Petco, what they normally sell you in a PetSmart are actually super, super small. Those cages are ideal for traveling if you're going to the vet, if you're moving houses or something like that. Very short term transportation. However, for day to day life, those are way too small and we would recommend going bigger. Um, so it, it all definitely depends on the size of your animal, but you need to make sure that they have at least, depending on the animal, about four square feet per per critter. Okay, so now that we have this done, we're going to put that to the side and we're going to create our next piece. So you have two templates for this next piece that's going to be in your tip. Where is it? There we go. In your template drive. This is going to be, oh, this is going to be the base of it. And then this right here is going to be the walls. We're going to be creating our thoracic tent. Right, so I'm, I'm going to, Isabel, oh. I'm going to uh, shoot real quick to the PowerPoint so they can see the supplies. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you are definitely gonna need some fleece. I recommend fleece because it doesn't fray that easily. It's super soft, it's great for them. Cardboard, because it's really easy to handle. Most of us are shopping off of Amazon and Walmart and all those other places that provide you boxes. So I'm hoping this is something that you have lying around. Um, scissors or a box cutter. Because we are working with cardboard and it's a little bit thicker, I actually would recommend the box cutter just because, hey, hey, box. But if you're comfortable with scissors, by all means, use a scissors, um, a glue gun. And once again, we're going to be using that eco-friendly glue sticks from Elmer's. So if you look at the next slide, that's our stuff assembled. I originally used holiday fabric, but it kind of clashed with the fresh Park thing. So I changed over to this really cute salted fabric. And that's what this is going to look like once it's cut out. So your three sides and your base. Oh, nice and wrapped up. Wasn't that so cute, guys? Oh. And that's your base. I did double pad the base just to give it a little bit of extra comfort. You actually see it really well here. It's a little on the thick side. So you can double pad. You can do a single pad. It's really up to you. Um, I just like spoiling animals. That's my thing. All right. Let's see what you got to do. All right, guys. So here is our base i already pre-cut the triangle out of the fabric so what you're going to do is lay it down face down because you want that to to be the out piece right you're going to go ahead and put in your triangle now one thing i did learn is how you cut your triangle is actually how you want to lay this because that is going to actually give you the most accurate wrap and I always leave a, about half an inch to an inch extra fabric on each side, just to give me room to be able to wrap it. So we're gonna strip a glue. You kind of have to find that sweet spot with the glue too, because you don't want to do too much 
but you also need just enough like life, right? In philosophical on Critter Day. Anyway, to the next side. As you guys can see, I'm a little wary of the glue because of how many times I've been burned. But I keep coming back. Okay. All right. Okay. Fold over. And as much as you can, you want to go ahead and keep this tight just because you want to kind of stretch a little pump over the, the actual piece. Now, you can leave these edges sticking out if you like. Personally, I like folding them in, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Just a little dollop of glue and check out that. And if you guys really do end up making these, which I hope everyone will, because we had so much fun creating these and coming up with the concepts for this Twitter page, by all means, take a picture, tag us on Instagram. It'd be really, really great to be able to see. Yeah, we were really excited about this process was really challenging. So we'd love to see your versions for sure. So this is what you end up with. Um, here are the other pieces. So we have three and personally i think this fabric is so cute it goes great with our theme it kind of has like a salted feel and then this is actually our base piece as you guys can see i actually only single padded this so it's a little on the thin side but it does its job the fabric is really really soft and what we're going to do with this is you have to get your pieces uh what side of the piece did this go this goes this way all right so we're gonna line it up about there, there, and then there's gonna be a third piece that connects along the back. So let's go ahead and do that. Before I get started, let me reload on the glue. So we're gonna do long side down. And I don't have the straightest hand, but I do recommend doing the glue line as straight as possible, just because your cardboard is going to be in a straight line and it'll be a little bit easier for it to stick. Fold it down. And I like to hold on to it until I get the second piece on there, just because that'll be a little on the easier side. So then I personally do it on this side just because I'm already holding this piece and then line the bottom again. So hold it there, hold it there. And then hold. So just get it nice and, and strong. Now, as you guys can see, I do have a little bit of a piece that sticks out. And I actually did do that purposely. So this way, if you create a fringe, it actually has a nice little block to it. And I'll be able to show you how to do that fringe in just a second. OK, last piece, glue it down. 
right along the edge there. Okay. And then same thing as before, hold it in place. Okay. And there we go. This, so you can definitely leave this this way if you prefer. If this is the finished look and you don't want to add a fringe, like this could be definitely a completed piece. Just want you guys to look at how cute this is. However, so good. Right? If yes. you're an overachiever like Miss Lonnie and Miss Izzy, because <laughs> that's what we do in life, you yep. can actually strip some fabric. And that way, when it comes down, it actually creates kind of a tent feel. So, the way you're going to be able to do that is you're going to take a look at how much you want to come down. So you need to measure out this way and this way. So I'm going to do maybe about five inches. Cut that out. Okay. Then double check your measurement to make sure it's where you would like it. Lift this this way. I think that would look a little bit better. Yeah, that looks great. And then you can do kind of an overlay glue. So line that up there. And you could just glue along this back edge. And then same thing on the opposite side. Glue along that back edge. And guess what? We're going to tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Love it. It's my thing. I can no longer deny it. I know. All right. And then we're going to strip this. You can make your curtain strips as long or, sorry, not as long, as thick or as thin as you want. And you can even play with like the sizes, you can play with the lengths, anything that your little heart desires or your creatures that are heart desires. This is really more about kind of providing them, again, that extra hidey hole like we were talking about. Critters prefer places that they can feel safe. Mm -hmm. So this is going to give them an extra element of that. All right. So that's what you end up with if you add this extra piece. Nice little fringe that they can call home. And that with this demo, I believe Lonnie actually is going to show us another demo about what to do with Jurassic Park. Yeah. Okay, guys, so we are back to me. Um, we want to move it along because I want to show you guys. So this is the bridge that I originally built that I showed you guys in the demo. I actually think I, I'm deciding I'm actually going to um, cover this bridge with the paper mache recipe project. I was going to use this box originally, but you know what? I, I'd rather just make this pretty cool. So before we get started, don't forget you need a napkin, towel, something, because you're going to be doing this a whole lot. Um, I got paper towels, then I got my mixing bowl, I got my flour, I got some water, and I got my cup for measurement and a spoon. Um, I also have scissors, so beforehand, if you're working with little kids, um, I would recommend cutting these down to smaller strips. If you're older, you may be able to maneuver easily with the paper towels. Um, but even whatever size you decide, I mean, usually they tell you to kind of strip it down like long strips like so. So I'm going to go ahead and just, just want to show you what to do. So I'll just use these pieces for, for now. I actually covered them with full-on paper towels when I did it, but I think you just have to practice a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just take one part flour to one part water. 
and do it right over the bowl. So if you kind of go over a little bit, it's not the end of the world. This stuff gets everywhere. So like I said, just kind of be prepared to get messy. Um, like I said, I recommend doing more than one part. I usually do three parts water, three parts flour, because you don't want to have to keep remaking this. You're going to be, get, your hands are going to be covered and you're not going to want to have to keep going back to the kitchen and remixing everything. So that's why I recommend actually just making more. And then as long as you have more, you can just dump it. But if you have less, you're going to have to keep going back and it kind of wastes time. So there's my flour. I'm going to go ahead and just do the one part water. Now I found that the one part to one part actually makes the flour water really chunky, but you want it to kind of have um, a more watery than chunky sort of vibe because when you apply it, it just gets super messy. Um, I did use really chunky in the beginning. Um, but you just gotta make sure that you have it in a place where you can dry it um, really well. So putting it outside, it really helps. Or if you're, you know, if your house has like a really nice heater, um, not putting it too close, but close enough that you know that it's actually going to dry really well there. Um, and it should be dry within the 24 hours. It'll definitely be dry enough for you to re kind of put on another layer the next day. Um, so even if it feels a little moist and wet, it's not the end of the world. It'll eventually dry and you'll be surprised on how dry it actually does get. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and Put my hair back i just realized my hair is like everywhere and then this is the fun part <laughs> you know go ahead and i'm going to use this as just sort of a holding area for my awesome bridge so i i didn't do this on the on the piece before but you're going to go ahead and do that and see how chunky i don't know if you guys can see it gets super chunky so i actually use the the edge of the bowl to kind of pull off some of the chunk and I just lay it on guys and you just can go ahead and look now I can I can actually use this box if I want it to as part of the piece and it could just become this really cool ramp piece um but as like I said it feels really chunky so if anything I don't even I just kind of do it at the top just put a little layer of water and it just moistens the piece more like so And that's actually so much better, actually. And so I like to kind of do that, push off all the excess water. And it's really cool because once it starts to really get comfortable and settled in the piece, um, you can kind of push more layers on and then you can kind of maneuver the way that you want the piece to look. So you can actually add more structure. I think the initial piece. And so since I said I decided that it would be a part of this box, I would normally put tape on it right here just to kind of hold it down. But like I said before, this stuff really sticks. So it's definitely not going to be a problem. It's not going to break off, especially if you add a bunch of layers to the parts where things need to connect. And see, it's just starting to get really <laughs> messy. You'll get a rhythm. It's super zen, to be honest, to do this. Especially right now during a time I think when people want to be making and doing things, this is a really cool project to make for your animal. And just for you, you can add cool um, colors and all kinds of things to it. Michelle, did you want to throw up any of your cool? Um... Yeah, if we've got the time. Okay. So I'm going to throw a pull up on the screen, um, which homemade glue can be made by mixing what ingredients i love this one oh and the answers are kind of all over the place um mm -hmm. i've got sugar flour and water milk gelatin and water um, and I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And those of you that said all of the above, the answer is correct. So you can make a paper paste using sugar, flour, and water, mixing them completely and cooking everything over low heat until it clears. And then after it cools down, you can use it for glue. Or with a water-resistant glue, you can actually use skim milk and gelatin 
with water um, and you want to make you're going to soften the gelatin with water add milk at um, when it's warm and stir it until there's no lumps so this might be good for uh, covering uh, the base of materials very cool so michelle before you throw on the other one because we'll cut back to me after this is kind of what it would look like, you guys, if you cover the whole piece, um, and then eventually it would disappear. So this, you couldn't, you wouldn't even be able to see the inside there. It'll just turn into its own base piece, which could be a really cool piece. You could cut a hole in here. You could put another little cool little cave in there. So it could be like a cool bridge cave thing. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you, right. and I I actually have a couple more in regards to colors because I know we you you use that um, amazing beet powder, but yeah. which produce item can be used to make blue and purple? Oh. We've got a couple of different answers going on here. Uh, nobody likes red onions, huh? <laughs> uh, all right, well, those of you that said red cabbage are correct. You boil that head of red cabbage um, and the purple color comes off and it makes this really dark concentrated purple. But then if you add some baking soda to that, you can actually get a nice hue of blue. So neat. All right, and then one more. What is the best organic product you, you can use for the color orange? Yeah. Pumpkin, peaches, all the different parts of an orange or carrots. So I know Lonnie, we had this discussion earlier um, about what you thought, but those of you that said carrots are absolutely correct. So you can do it in one of two ways and you can either boil those carrots and use the water or you can grate the carrots and um, squeeze the grate so you get that nice concentrated juice. That's so neat. So what you got going on your end? Hey guys, so I know Izzy I think is setting up, right, right Michelle, for the big awesome uh, piece that we wanted to show you guys. Um, and I know that, oh, I think she's in. Hey. There she is. So it's the big Thoracic Park reveal of hey. all of the projects you got, you ladies have completed with us today. All right, friends. So if you're ready, welcome to Thoracic Park. <laughs> I love it. Very cool. So Izzy, can you tell us a little bit about um, sort of the pieces and the, how you decided to lay them out? Most definitely. So. What I really like about this is one, it's one solid piece. But like Delani was saying earlier, you do want to make sure that you have some kind of sealant on this. I would recommend that you look for something that's as close to eco-friendly as possible, just because your animals will be scurrying on this. They are going to be running around on this. They will be peeing and defecating. So you do want to make sure it's not going to get really grungy. But the beautiful part is if it does, you get another crafting day and you can make an entirely different layout. I also ended up putting the hammock up here because what's really nice is it's kind of like a two-part hidey hole. So there's an entrance down here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we have one hidey hole down here or you can scurry up on the second one with fringe. Optionally is you can always cut a hole along the top, cut a hole down here, and now they actually have like a second story. So that's something that you can add to it. We went ahead and added the grass one, it kind of builds the feel of Jurassic, right? But this is actually also really good for your critters. Guinea pigs, mice, other rodents will go ahead and nibble on this. It helps with their digestive system. It keeps things running smoothly, so to speak. Um, so this is actually going to be really, really good for them. 
and it's basic cat grass. You can actually get this at a Petco, you can get it at a PetSmart, you can even grow it yourself. They do sell seeds. So this is something that you can use. Um, I would recommend rotating it out though. Your critters are gonna go through it pretty fast. So you can have a couple bunches, maybe in different stages of growth. That way you can just rotate it out and they have a constant supply. Or if you wanna get super fancy, we do have this little area here that has ridges and is actually built in. Um, this is a part that normally built out of the egg carton. So you can actually add soil to this. You can add rock along the bottom for drainage and things like that. You just want to be, make sure that the sealant is in place because if not, it will kind of degrade the paper mache and the cardboard and all that. So sealant is super important. Off to the side, can you see? Yeah, we can see that. It's actually going to be our hammock. Now, you guys can see there's actually a little bit of a, of a difference here, and that's because this is actually a two-story cage. So this is the top story that we turn into kind of the living area, we have a bedroom and like an entertainment and all that. And there are stairs that go down to a bottom area, and this hammock rests right over that, just so it's a nice easy opening. And like you guys saw, I ended up using stacks of little clips to be able to hold the hammock in place. So this is actually something that you can take down and move around wherever it suits your cage. And because I make the strips on the longer side, you can even hang them from the top. It can hang right below your thoracic park sign and it'd be great. The other thing we did want to talk about though is what your critter needs to be able to live in their habitat. So I did bring a couple of things with me. One of them, and this is a really big one, substrate. This is something that we use here in the shelter. It's super high absorbency. Um, you can actually just scoop out the soil pieces every day and then change the substrate all together. I always forget to explain what substrate is just because animal world, I just assume everybody knows it. Um, but substrate is just going to be anything that you line your cage with. It's going to be a liner. You can use this stuff, you can also use shredded newspaper as a temporary fix if that you, you like run out. Um, they do sell special pellets that are low in odor, odor, high in absorbency. So any one of those you can buy at any uh, pet store. If possible, I would recommend shopping low scale, low scale and local, just because moms and pop shops need a little bit of love right now. But any pet store should be able to carry what you need. We also have some of these materials downstairs in our shelter shop. Hey. <laughs> um, go ahead. Miss Izzy, can you show them how we cut, how I cut the um, the cat grass into the piece? Can you pop yeah. that piece out? I want you guys to know that because it is a flower, water, paper thing, you can cut in and out of this piece. So as you can see the hole there in the back, I actually just measured out the cat grass and you can just pop stuff in. So. If you have like a water, little water uh, water bowl that has a lip, you just have to kind of cut it slightly smaller. So you can just pop all this stuff in if you want to create different sections with different plants. Like she said, cat grass or whatever uh, critter friendly herb you can get also from Home Depot or from a mom and pop nursery. Um, but definitely see, as, she, as you can see, she just pops it back in. So this is a really cool malleable piece you can like add to and take away. So yeah. And like Lonnie actually brought up, you can use anything in these. Um, critters are very, especially guinea pigs, are very partial to cilantro, parsley. You can give them the tops of carrots, um, yeah. tops of, so they really like leafy greens. It's a great addition to their diet. It doesn't take away anything nutritionally. Mm -hmm. So I usually recommend their diet should be about 30 to 40% fresh leafy green. But as long as they're getting all the nutrition they need from the pellets, that's also fine. Awesome. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention, you guys, you guys also received a bonus stencil template in your email. Um, it was for a cabin that we were going to use to, we were a ca cabin we were going to make. Izzy, can you go grab that real quick if it's not there already? Um, it was a cabin that we were going to build inside, but then we decided to do this sort of thoracic prehistoric theme. So it ended up going out the window, but we wanted to show you the cabin really quickly. It's a really easy project. Basically, the stencil is cardboard paper. You can use any sort of hard paper. And then I basically just glued non-toxic glue and I just used those uh, larger tongue depressants and I just lined the whole piece. 
So that could be something if you want to do a whole like cabin Western thing or whatever. It just didn't go with our theme at the point. So if you guys see that and you're wondering, why do I have a cabin? We just thought it'd be fun to add that into the rest of the pieces. So we had a lot of fun on this piece, right, Izzy? This was so much fun. And I'm really happy that we actually all got to build something this massive for you guys. So <laughs> it, yeah, I think we all worked. Michelle was always there for um support emotional support when i was like i don't know if this is gonna work so i'm good i think well, good. I hope you guys are happy yeah ladies i want to give you props because it came out amazing and from what i'm looking at in the chat box um people are very pleased and they've got lots of questions that i've been trying to answer the best that i could but one um, comment that really stood out to me is that the audience really enjoys our camaraderie. And I think part of that is because outside of work, we don't just work together as a team, but we get along in the real world as well. <laughs> totally. We love each other. It helps. It. it helps for sure. Are there any other questions, Michelle, that you think that we need to answer? No, we no i think i i've pretty much gotten them all and there's a lot of they can't wait to build this for their own guinea pig so, yeah, I hope so. Um, tomorrow everybody you should you will be getting um a copy of this recording and the templates will be in there the um i will include the two recipes that i have to make paste as well as the recipe for the paper mache um and if you don't get it give us a uh, an email at outreach at pasadena humane.org um one more poll before we sign off because we always want to know how people heard about this webinar so take a look at your screen um have you been with us before we like to call you repeat offenders if you have um <laughs> the newsletter the our website social media friend or family member so, um, so we do have some first timers i hope that you have enjoyed our webinar and you'll join us for we have two more webinars in 2020 and then a whole bunch of stuff planned in 2021 for everyone um and so we thank you all for coming and I want to um, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving next week. We are going to take a break from a webinar next week for the holiday. <laughs> oh, but we love you guys. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye, Bye. ladies. Bye.